Hi everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. I hope that you are all well. It's been a lovely few days with the sun shining and I thought that I would do this video that I promised uh, quite a while ago now. Uh, so today I am going to talk about eight tips that help me reach my reading goals and help create a habit of reading for me. One of the questions that I get the most often is, how do you read so much? So I do want to clarify that last year my answer was COVID. I had tons more time, I wasn't traveling anywhere, and the same could be said so far this year as well. In a normal year, reading 50 to 60 books is a success for me. Uh, last year I read over 150, and this year so far we're in March and I've read about 35-ish. And my guess is that in 2021, um, it would likely be another big reading year for me. Uh, we just finished Canada Reads, so I still want to get to some of those books that were on the long list. And I will talk a bit more about Canada Reads um, near the end of this video. So when I was thinking about how I might answer this question, I came up with eight tips that I do regularly uh, that seem to help me. Other people might have, you know, some other tips that help them and I think that's fantastic. I think that the most important thing is to try some things out and see what works best for you. Um, and then you just go with that. So hopefully some of these will, will help or maybe you already do some of them as well. My first tip is to be realistic and what I mean by this is if you normally read 10 books a year, it might not be realistic to set your goal at 200 books a year. Um, you know yourself and you know how fast you read and what you want to read. So if you are setting a goal for the number of books you want to read, then take all of those factors into consideration. And it isn't a race, so you know, go easy with yourself. And also, if you are thinking of challenging yourself, then be realistic with that too. So saying you want to read all of Stephen King's books in one year might work for someone who loves Stephen King, loves horror, and reads fairly quickly um, because many of his books are massive, uh, plus he has a gazillion of them. Um, but if you are someone who takes more time to read and you don't like Stephen King that much, then maybe a more realistic challenge would be to read one or two Stephen King books at some point throughout the year. Another thing to take into consideration is if you want to count books or if you want to count pages. So there is a huge difference between this book and this book. So if you are counting both of these as one book, then it won't be very equal. So if I told you that the 150 some books I read last year were only 30 pages each, it might not seem so impressive. Um, but if you say that you want to read 10,000 pages in a year, that's about 30 average books. And if reading more is a goal for you, then figuring out how you want to do that is important. And there is no right or wrong way. And I strongly feel that as long as you are reading, that's all that matters. Secondly, one of the key things I do to make reading a habit is to read every day. This seems obvious to me, but probably because it's already a habit. Um, now, reading every day doesn't mean you finish a book a day. Uh, maybe, you know, one day you read 10 pages, another day you might read 50 pages, and then there are those wonderful, rare, glorious occasions when you might be able to read a book in a day. Um, it doesn't matter how much or how long you read, as long as you are reading something every day. Third, another tip that helps me is reading a variety of books. Um, so what does that mean? Um, I read short books, chunky books, which um, chunky books are what I call a book with over 400 pages. I read books from different genres and that have different topics. Um, I am very much a mood reader, so this helps me have something that fits my mood and I don't get bored. So from that comes my fourth tip, which works for me, but I know it doesn't work for everyone. 
Um, I read more than one book at a time. I always have two to three books on the go, sometimes even five or six books happening at one time. So this helps me with reading what I feel like um, at the time. So for example, I am reading Pride and Prejudice right now, and reading this takes you know a totally different mental power than reading a book of poetry or reading li literary fiction. So if I feel like reading and I don't have the mental power for Pride and Prejudice, then I can choose something else and I'm still reaching my goals. And if I don't have something else on the go, then I would more than likely just not read and the entire purpose, as we know, is to read more and make it a habit. The fifth tip is to make reading more of a priority. And I don't mean that this, you know, I'm not saying that reading has to be the number one thing in your life. Uh, we're busy people, there's a lot going on in the world. So for me, reading is a big part of how I take my downtime and it's part of my self care. So sometimes I might want to watch TV or go for a walk or do something else. And of course, it's still good to do all of those things. But making a habit of reading might mean less TV time or choosing it over other things. Um, at the bare minimum, it needs to go into a routine somewhere. So it might be a priority when you get up in the morning and you have your coffee, or it might be part of your night routine to prioritize reading you know, a chapter before bed. The sixth tip is to always have a book with you. And this is much easier than it used to be uh, now that there are audiobooks and apps and different reading devices. You don't always, you know, have to have a physical copy of a book with you. So carrying this around might be a little difficult. Um, so if you have a dentist appointment and you have to wait 10 minutes, instead of playing on your phone, you can read for the 10 minutes on an app on your phone. Or if you are at your kid's sporting event, you can bring a book with you. And it's always better to have the book. And if you don't get to it, then fine. But if you have 10 to 20 minutes, um, that's some time that can be spent making reading a priority. For these times, I will often have short stories or poetry books so that I don't have to worry about, you know, getting a chunk of the story read or remembering what's going on. Number seven is to read what you love and what makes you happy. So if you enjoy graphic novels or romances or nonfiction, whatever it is, read that. Uh, sometimes people feel that there are books they have to read in order to be well read or to be called a reader. And I totally disagree with that. If you don't care for classics or you don't like sci-fi, then don't read it. Uh, there's nothing worse than dreading having to read a book. If you are dreading it, move on and maybe come back to it at another time. You are a reader if you are reading and it should bring you pleasure. And then lastly, the eighth tip ties in with the first tip. Make reading a plan, make it, sorry, make a reading plan, but be flexible. The first tip was to be realistic in your reading goals. So when you are setting up these realistic goals, um, you might decide to read 12 books a year. That's a book a month. And that's, I think, pretty realistic. So now here we are, it's March, and let's say you haven't finished a book yet. You know, that's okay, be flexible with yourself and don't beat yourself up for that. Um, just take a look to see if you need to change your, your reading goals or maybe adjust the plan. Maybe you need to read a few you know, shorter books to get caught up. You know, it's all allowed and there's no reading police, so you can be kind to yourself and work on making reading a habit in the ways that work best for you. So these are some of the things that, you know, I do that help me keep on track with reading. I also participate in buddy reads. I have a book club and I'm inspired by different book awards and um, following different book competitions like Canada Reads. And I was thrilled that this week Johnny Appleseed won this year Canada Reads 2021. Um, Canada Reads made history and if you followed along with Canada Reads and the recaps that my friends and I did uh, each evening then thank you so much for that. Uh, you can still check those out on my Canada Reads playlist and I will also leave links to everything below. You can still watch um, the debates and you can see our conversation with Ali Hassan who is the host of Canada Reads. 
please let me know in the comments uh, below what some of your reading tips are. What are some things that you know you do that help make uh, reading a habit for you? And is there anything new that you are trying to do this year that might be working for you and helping you reach your goals? I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy your day. And don't forget to make every day an adventure.